My Manchester! What's up, brother? What's up, dude? You have arrived. Oh, it's so good to see you. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh! Hold on, mercy. Our shit. Yeah, your, your stuff's a little more in order than mine. Mine's kind of... <laughs> well, of course, I do have the most unique things in the vehicle. There is a desert bighorn skull right here. Hell yeah. yeah. I would expect nothing we less. We got a desert bighorn skull, mic, fly rods, all kind of stuff. So, we're rocking. Let's roll, awesome. baby. Fishing is a way for millions of people to connect with nature. The challenge of actually catching fish combined with family fun, serene settings, and solitude are drawing more people than ever. Fly fishing is often viewed as an artistic fishing upgrade for the wealthy and elite. But the reality is fly fishing is catching on amongst a wide range of people. From inner city kids to construction workers to investment bankers, the elegant and diverse nature of fly fishing has many people hooked. And it's even caught three friends from different states and backgrounds who decided to take a wild journey to fish together during an intense outdoor media road trip. There's me, Chester, who has fished his whole life and caught everything from bonefish to peacock bass. There's Paul, who's fairly new to the sport, but has learned quickly through a high octane work ethic. And then there's Seth, who loves nature, but hasn't caught a fish since he was 16 years old. We wanted to share this journey to inspire you to get out and get fishing. Whether it's with a fly rod or cane pole, life is better in pursuit of fish. One of my favorite places to go is a fly shop. However, it's also one of my least favorite places to go because you get a cup, a little thingy this big, and it costs $85. Hello. How are y'all? Mm -hmm. I put the purple one on. The other day, the purple was the key color here. <laughs> Pink and purple. One of the alluring parts of trout fishing is the challenge of finding effective patterns to catch them. Trout, whether rainbows, browns, or cutthroats, can be on completely different bites daily with different patterns in different parts of the same river. You really do need to match the hatch. That's why getting intel and flies at a local fly shop like the one at Beaver's Bend is crucial. I fish my entire life, and it's been one of my outdoor wildlife obsessions. But what set in motion fly fishing was the pandemic. Uh, I had done some fly fishing when I was a little bit younger. I kind of put the fly rod away, and I thought, you know, I've caught all the bass I can probably on traditional gear. So I grabbed my fly rod, and what I did, it was an immediate connection with the last time I grabbed it, and that was fly fishing the Little Red River in Arkansas. And I had these memories connect me with how fun that was. And what fly fishing has become is kind of like bow hunting as a hunter. It's a more intimate level of doing this. And fly fishing connects you more directly to the fish. It's taking that fly, projecting the water gently in more of a naturalistic approach. And I love the fact that like if you go trout fishing, for example, you're trying to match today's hatch. And it's that challenge of making it match nature. And although we're using not so natural gear, the idea of being able to learn what it takes for me to connect and catch that trout or catch that bass or catch that bluegill is something special. And it presents this new challenge, it's beautiful and fun, and it uh, brings me back to that and the reason that I started fishing and hunting, to connect with nature. Many people have the misconception that going fly fishing or just fishing in general is difficult. And while we admit there are challenges, the biggest ones we face were putting on our waders without looking like buffoons and making the time to get together. If you want a lesson in proper fly casting and etiquette, not your guy. If you want a lesson in how to have fun on the water and get easy access, then we can talk. You know, I've never been the most uh, together angler when it came to having all the technical auspices of everything worked out, but uh, you know what always has a smile on my face and usually a man to catch some pretty good fish. And I think it's important kind of dispel myths that, you know, a lot of people want to get into the outdoors, especially, you know, post pandemic. You watch people on social media, and, you know, their TikTok feeds are like, uh, every cast is a fish and there's this illusion that everything's great. And I'm a pretty experienced fisherman. 
I've sat in this very same river and caught 18 fish in one setting. Been here four hours, I've caught zero. You know, it doesn't always work out great, but the thing is, anyone can access fishing. Fishing is a great equalizer. Got a rainbow on. And I don't have my net. So this is kind of. There we go. Man, what a beautiful fish, right? What a beautiful fish. Hey, it's happy to cut a fish though. Paul's about to catch uh, the state record over here, I think, though. As we spent a cold afternoon on the water, the fish did not want to cooperate. But one thing stood out. There was no strife, drama, or politics. And while we hoped the next day would bring better catches, we considered our time on the water a big win. Um, well, I'd only met Chester previously, I think, in person once before, and Chester uh, leaves quite the impression on you. We went uh, fly fishing yesterday for a few during the afternoon. I caught one. It was tough. Everybody I talked to was in fly rods, like. Yeah, it was even tougher up there. Really? We fished hard, man. I fished hard, but I know there was fish there. Yeah. There was vacation leaving, one in there. I got four bites. We got While the fish. goal was to catch <laughs> trout <laughs> on the fly, <laughs> we wanted to catch trout, period. So we booked a trip using traditional gear with expert guide Steve Branson. The side benefit is this portion of the video might have been a tiny portion of elitist fly fishermen. We certainly hope so. It didn't take long to find action on the traditional gear. The swift current made bite detection a little difficult, but that just made us focus not only on our sense of touch, but also our vision. Some bites were only detectable by seeing the line barely move except for Seth's first fish. It struck hard. Right. Bring it in, bring it in. Look at this bucky boy. That's a good looking fish. That trout yeah. was the first fish that I caught since I was 16. Um, so pulling that fish out of the water, I mean, honestly, it was I don't want to say it was a spiritual experience, but it definitely hit me in the gut. Like knowing that I was still capable of doing that. And then also having, you know, what, 24 years worth of experience between that and the last time I'd caught a fish, like it meant something completely different to me. I tend to value and, and, and think about animals uh, almost as people. Um, so knowing that I was taking that animal uh, out of that out of that environment and you know killing it and eating it, um, yeah, it hit me a little bit different than it did when I was 16. But you know, I think I've learned to like kind of cope with that and learn to to make that part of my life and and sort of take pride in the fact that you know if I caught that animal, like I've, I've sourced it and I'm eating it, and I'm not relying on somebody else to do that for me. All right, so we ran into a problem that we rarely have. We were too good at fishing, and we were at Beaver's Bend outside of Broken Bow, Oklahoma. We limited out, Seth, Chester, and myself all limited out on trout. Apparently the rule there is you're no longer allowed to fish at all for trout once you limit out. So we are headed back to Texas. Yeah. Outside of Lano, right? Outside of Lano in the South Lano River area. Gonna go for Guadalupe bass. There's only living a certain amount of rivers there. I think it's six river systems in Texas and maybe catch some large mouth and sunfish as well. Yeah, so I've never caught a Guadalupe bass. I'm pretty sure Seth hasn't. So we're gonna go see what that's all about. And we're actually pretty excited because this is some true dirt bag fishing right here. Some, some uh, road tripping. We're excited. So we'll see you guys down there. We got about six hours of driving to do between then and now, so I'm sure you don't want to watch that. Yeah, you know, the thing about this, not only doubles for steaks and fish and things like that, but it uses a self-defense weapon. <laughs> Women, if someone's trying to mug you, just fling this in their, in their eyes and it just takes them. 
So the Beaver is all about food, defense, good living. Man. Bucky the defense beaver. <laughs> that is. <laughs> I decided to start fly fishing because Chester bugged me to come on this fly fishing trip. I had no interest in fly fishing ever. I thought it was for rich, old people, and it seemed really hoity-toity, really, you know, upper scale. is like the golf of fishing. So I had no interest in it. I'm genuinely a redneck kind of guy. I like bass fishing. I like catching bluegill. I like screwing around the lake. And, uh... Chester, you know, invited me to come down to Oklahoma, and he's like, dude, you just just try it. So I got a cheap rod, and now I'm freaking obsessed, and I'm very upset at him about this. We're here near Llano, Texas, right by the Llano River at Texas Parks and Wildlife Public Access Site. We're going to be fishing for Guadalupe and largemouth bass. Pretty exciting. The whole point of us doing this trip is that you don't have to go to extravagant places to be able to fish. We just pulled off on the side of the road here and we're gonna wade down into this river back here. Mm -hmm. I've never been here before. I don't know how to fish this river. Chester knows how to fish this river. So we're gonna get after it and then we got shit to do and we're gonna get down the road, babe. Love it. While hunting costs are skyrocketing, fishing remains a relatively inexpensive, family-friendly activity. And it is a great place to learn the tenets of wildlife conservation by engaging in releasing the biggest fish and only keeping others you intend to eat. It also creates an appreciation for clean waters, viable fisheries, and aquatic biodiversity you can't learn in school. My first ever fish on the fly, little pan fish. Think like a lot of things, a barrier to entry is perceived more so than it is a fact. Because like from what I've found is the people that I hang out with that fly fish aren't spending a thousand dollars on a rod. You know, there are plenty of people that do that, but there are also plenty of people out there who will go and buy a $600 bass rod, you know? So it's like, it's just orders of magnitude of what is acceptable and I think just with fly fishing in particular, there's this aura that it's always expensive. And I think for me, the barrier of entry was always that I knew it took more skill. And that's more intimidating because I didn't want to look like a jackass than the actual buying stuff. Because I know outdoor stuff just can be expensive in general. So I think it's a perceived barrier to entry and I wish more people would go out on that limb because it is fun. It's just a different form of fishing and there's different applications for it. I think previously when I would go out and spin fish and I wouldn't catch anything, I would get frustrated with it. Whereas now, if I go out and fly fish uh, and I don't catch anything, I don't consider that a defeat. That's the biggest thing for me that's changed is just being more patient with myself, being more patient with the fish, being more patient with the situation. And if something doesn't work out, I am grateful for what I have learned, and I, I take that into my, my next experience. I think fly fishing has opened me up to more conversations about fishing. It's more about playing the game and understanding the fish than it is about just going out and fishing. Play, putting that puzzle together can be infinitely more frustrating because you're not always catching fish. But you're always testing new ideas and learning how big lakes work or learning how rivers work with the fish and places where they can hide and food sources are going to be and like just different weather patterns and all this stuff works together. And I think that's, that, that puzzle is what draws me in because I like to be frustrated and crack that code, I think. Fishing means the same for me now as it did a little kid, a connection to nature. I'm able to take some kind of a lure, whether that's a big topwater lure, whether it's a live shrimp or earthworm, or whether it's a fly, project it into the water and discover what's under that water. See, my whole life I've been intrigued by what is out there. If I look into a wood lot, I wonder if there's a big buck hiding out there. If I look into a stream, is there a nice bass? If I look into a lake, you know, is there a giant catfish? That is the essence of what it means to me, but it really means more. Fishing is the great equalizer. You might play football at the zenith and the pros till you're in your 30s, and that's a very select group of people. 
you can fish until you're 100 years old or even older. So it allows everyone to have a connection to nature, to have fun, no matter your background, income, etc. And I love fishing for that. And I love fly fishing for reinvigorating my love of fishing and constantly putting a smile on my face. What are we about to go do, Seth? About to go fly fishing. <laughs> For Where? the first time ever in Oklahoma, randomly. Yesterday we were fly fishing. Today we're using push button Zepco. You know, a snooty fisherman would kind of be like, oh, that's beneath me. I like catching fish. Not sure if they're as hot as they have been being, but. We'll Here with your your buddies. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you 